Last week I released a video of the witch farms on the Sidecraft server and you guys seemed to really enjoy it. You loved hearing all of the technical information and just seeing the ridiculous spectacle that is some of the builds on the Sidecraft server. And I, I mean, I do apologize, little witch farm. I kind of blasted you quite a lot in that video, but I mean, you are looking a bit pathetic. With that being said, the Sidecraft server isn't just witch farms. There are tons upon tons of builds on there. In fact, we were playing for around about eight hours in total and apparently I'd only seen about 25% of it. So I'm barely scratching the surface at this point in time, but I thought it'd be a good idea to release some of the other things that I'd seen. And just so you know, in this first clip, I don't really talk that much because I wanted to let Nembom explain everything in full. Okay guys, so we are at the location of the passive mob farm here on the Sidecraft server. And this is one of the first projects I think I made here. And this was done back in 1.8. This whole dug, sorry, this whole, uh, hole, this entire hole was dug with TNT from dispensers <laughs> before the duping was possible, I think, or di or, or discovered. Because the thing is, if you lower the spawn chunks, sorry, if you lower the sub sub chunks, we all know about it. Then we can get much denser spawning. So this is uh, so this is a passive mob farm, and if you guys know, passive mob farms tend to be really slow. So we have to maximize uh, the number of spawning platforms and the area. So we have here four spawning platforms within the first sub chunk. And then we'll, uh, when I turn on the clock, we'll be able to periodically flash the mobs uh, into, the, in, in, into the nether. So every 20 seconds, we should be able to see a bunch of mobs spawning in and uh, either falling on this side or uh, on the other side of the portal. So one side uh, is covered with fire and uh, hopper minecarts, so it cooks the mobs. And on the other side, we have magma blocks, which uh, kill them, but don't burn the drops. So we have cooked and uncooked stuff as well. Pink sheep are very rare. I think like one out of a million. Uh, it's, it's, it's something really rare. So this, so this is all the pink wool we got from running of this farm. So you can see that it was quite a bit. And actually, while we were recording, a pink sheep actually came through the system, which is not something I was expecting. I don't know if I've ever seen a naturally generated pink sheep before, so this might have been a first for me. Anyway, one of the mobs that comes out of these passive mob farms is, of course, horses. So they built a system so that they can sort their horses. Unfortunately, this place also doesn't work anymore, but I'm just going to explain what we did here. Um, so the horses got sorted via translocation. So remember the behavior and piston were able to pull entities through themselves and we sorted out the horses from the other animals first or sorted out the baby horses from the horses and then checked those horses for their attributes so their speed their jumping height health is clear um via the trans translocation system here so we basically in this little chamber here we already got one horse exactly delivered to us then we had a storage in the side with some sugar in order to tame the horse. And once the horse was mounted, uh, we checked first the speed. So here in the back, 100 meters away, you can see a seven segment stopwatch. That's as accurate as a 20th of a second. So I'm just gonna get a horse. Then you just need to ride in a straight line for 100 meters and then it will display the time it took to ride exactly those 100 meters. Okay, I'm gonna get 180 exactly. I can feel the pressure's on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so when you arrive, it takes about three seconds, and then you got the final result. So, so this horse has a speed of 7.25 per hundred meter. Is that fast? Is this a fast? That's horse? actually a really fast horse. <laughs> now, these are all the jump tests as well. Yeah. So for different heights, check how, how high the horse can oh, jump. I see. I mean, this, this horse is pretty bad. Anyway, that's enough horsing around. Let's move on to the next farm, which is Nembom's Guardian Farm. So this is the uh, first Guardian Farm I built here on the server. Yep. And uh, it was essentially uh, the design where I optimized uh, the, the essentially spawning conditions, trying to get the most out of the single, uh, single Guardian, single player uh, mob farm essentially. So essentially, what I did here is I, I just basically clear out the monument. I left the monument. I just I just replaced all the blocks from one pallet to another pallet. I think it looks pretty sweet. So this is kind of a small uh, small garden farm, really. Yep. 
but then we realized we need a little bit more sea lanterns because we sometimes need a lot of them for basically to cover a perimeter or something. Yeah. So uh, so we have a bigger garden farm, I guess, that's, that can deliver a little bit more. So this is an actual map all of the actual Minecraft terrain. This is not any... <laughs> What what happened to it? <laughs> uh, you'll see in a moment. <laughs> just don't don't worry about it. Okay. So the thing with clownfish is up to one point twelve. Clownfish was one of the rarest uh, items in the game by far. Right. And uh, by essentially throwing a challenge to get a double chest of each item, but not double chest, but double chest of shulker boxes of each item. Yep. Then I needed hundred thousand clownfish. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a lot so, of clownfish. That's a lot of clownfish. So uh, the thing is, if this farm is running at two or three mob caps, you can get, uh, you can uh, keep killing up to 100 guardians per per second. Right. Which is uh, your yep. yourselves with a with a sword, and uh, and and this way you can get about 250 clownfish per uh, per hour. Which means that the whole that which means that the whole project, although mental turned out to be feasible. So I AFK'd here for two weeks, and I guess we'll be able to see in the on, on, on the overall part how it panned out. What on earth did you do here? What, <laughs> the, what is this? Is I, the covered, I covered it up with blocks, OK? <laughs> this is the most <laughs> ridiculous thing. <laughs> so you can mango explain maybe the per the perimeter part yeah okay so yeah in this perimeter we didn't want to just flood it again to make it spawn proof we thought about placing blocks there and in total in order just to do the floor we would need to place eight hundred thousand blocks which is doable by hand but we thought maybe we could actually automate the process um in the end we got a machine that was able to do that but unfortunately the effort to build the machine around it was kind of higher than uh, doing everything by hand, and that's why we decided uh, maybe we can actually add a system or component to the machine that makes it worth it. And yeah, randomizing the block blocks is is kind of worth it to do it with a machine because it's quite simple. But it would be super tedious to do this by hand. Yeah. So in the end, yeah, we made a machine that made a randomized uh, floor pattern and also for the walls in order to place the blocks. So yeah, it's completely random when it comes to the blocks, but also the gradient changes. So we had two color palettes. If you would fly from uh, from the north end to the south, yep. you'll notice that the yeah the color palette goes a bit darker. So we actually added an additional gradient to it um, in order yeah, <laughs> to, to complicate it pretty much. And, just, and, just because. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is yeah, because I, I had noticed that that it had gone to like a slightly more browny yeah. color towards the edge, whereas this side is like a whiter edge, and then not a hundred percent satisfied with the result, um, but it definitely looks interesting. It's something it just else. used too <laughs> many colors, so I yeah. this was a palette of sixteen colors 16. in total. Mm -hmm. I think if it looks done awesome. it with eight, it would have been it would have looked so much better. Do you reckon? Just going going from black to white was just too harsh of a step. Uh, well, I mean, I have to say, I mean, I think this looks, I think this looks, this looks so, so cool, and it's so cool to see, like, once again, this sort of thing just built in survival mode is totally nuts. So, yeah, so basically, we had an AFK player standing in a box. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, no. He got, <laughs> got blocks dispensed to him, and he would just place the blocks one after the other, uh, fill up one complete line, which then got pushed over. Did yep. that 12 times in a row. And then flying machines got launched that yeah, flew over the blocks and deposited them 12 rows at a time. And I would just need to AFK here in the end. I mean, I, you know, I know I keep asking how long it takes to do certain things, but how long did someone have to AFK here to fill in all? I think all... it was around 40 hours per layer. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, additionally, it was also quite a lot of effort to build this up. Yes. Uh, in the end, I mean, as I already said, it's not really worth it if you just need a plain floor to cover it with blocks, but the uh, randomizers kind of made it worth it. Yeah, I know. Totally, totally ridiculous. Just utterly ridiculous. And we haven't even looked at the farm yet. So to get one million, uh, to essentially to basically process one million items per hour, you need a quite a bit of sorters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
so so the good thing about them is they are all open, so you can access every single uh, hopper, and you can basically reconfigure them. And if you want, for example, more shards, you can you can collect more shards. If you want more um, like prism and crystals or other drops, you can collect them as well. Yeah. And the entire system is is closed. So we have a storage for shulker boxes. Uh, and then uh, those shocker boxes, uh, basically those items are being packed to the shocker boxes. Those shocker boxes go to the go to the storage. There is a crafting station where you can craft the items in, in, into the blocks. Yep. And then the empty shocker boxes go back to the to the shocker boxes storage. This is the most ridiculous thing I think I've ever seen. <laughs> so, uh, and yeah, and yeah, yeah, and this is not RNG mani uh, manipulation. This farm actually produces more than uh more than the rng farms produce mobs like with one wow. okay you can okay you can rng as many spawns as you want but for one pack it's it's actually faster this is crazy i mean yeah and, the, uh, this is this is just a constant flow of guardians i can't believe that yeah. this actually exists so this is and like and this is like totally legit there is nothing that's against any minecraft rules Yep. with regards to this farm. So that's just brilliant. Psycraft made my witch farm in Hermitcraft Season 6 look pathetic, and now they've made my guardian farm in Hermitcraft Season 5 look pathetic. Right, let's pop through to spawn. Okay, then maybe we should actually start off the, one of the first huge projects. Doesn't look like much, uh, but a lot of hours of effort went into it. It's the mobs which we have at spawn. So this is the huge purple-green tower. Yep. And yeah, you can go really close and maybe you can t take a look inside. Oh, there seems to be a ton of shulkers in minecarts. Exactly. How, how did you... I mean, there's so many shulkers in here. How long did it take for you to get all of these guys in minecarts? Like... Um... It was actually a quite, quite a process. Yeah. So we went to the, to the end. To numerous entities, collected those shulkers, brought them over to the overworld, <laughs> and put them in here. And in total, probably 50, 60 hours went into this project. That... So yeah, this is not this is not just decoration. This has a, has a very, very useful purpose. The shulker is a special uh, trait. It counts toward the towards the mob cap, but doesn't despawn. Right. It has this trait because of a uh, couple other mobs, uh, for example, the wizard or the Elder Guardian, um, yeah. and we use this basically to make a mob switch. So we can switch between mob spawning and yeah, a pseudo peaceful mode. Right. So as you can see here, this uh, spawn area, so we line it out yeah. with the white glass blocks. This is the corner of the spawn chunks. Yeah. So if we press this button, the shulkers are moved into the spawn chunks again. Yeah. The spawn chunks are always loaded. That means we have 600 mobs counting towards the mob cap. So if we go to another area of the server now, mob spawning is basically turned off yep. because the mob cap is full with those shulkers. We could definitely do one of those on the Hermitcraft server. Anyway, they then took me down into the control room and explained something that doesn't seem like it should be possible, but clearly it is because they've done it. So here we have a lever that um, loads instant line and at the end of the instant line, there's basically just 2,000 chests on chunk borders. <laughs> it might sound a lot, but it's actually quick to set up. Yeah. And those ch uh, chests load these chunks because they check if they can be a double chest. So once you start loading them, they check, can I be a double chest? And load the next chunk. Right. And that location is uh, specifically chosen um, because we can basically reset parts of the code of Minecraft so um, you get a defined outcome if you use a fortune pick on ores. <laughs> Let's activate it. We set up something at the top again. Then uh, yeah, click the lever, go over the switch, switches here, and then go up, I guess. Ready? Yes. Yes. Doesn't that look insane now? <laughs> that does look ridiculous. And yeah, I got, I've got three, I've got four stacks exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Eight times twenty uh, three. Uh, so, so did you? I mean, <laughs> that that's that's really yes. weird. That's so strange. So yeah. so with this setup, you can guarantee a certain you number get four of items. diamonds out of each diamond ore, yeah. for example. So if you want to mine the diamonds as well, <laughs> you can no, get your this diamond is... achievement. <laughs> oh, this is this isn't this isn't fair. 
This is ridiculous. There you go, 32 diamonds from <laughs> from eight. Isn't that insane? <laughs> and uh, for <laughs> redstone, for example, you get eight, and for nether quartz, also four, I think. So that... we got the maximum for all of them. This is the coolest thing ever. So, and the, and is that only these items, or is that? I mean, it's for the ores. All the ores. Okay, yeah. so if you were to fill, the, I mean, this is just me being silly. If, if you were to fill this chunk with those ores, would it all of them? Would all of them drop the maximum amount, or is it only in these yes. locations? Yeah. No, it, it works everywhere it. on the Everyone server. It. Yeah. it works everywhere on the server. server. There's a slight problems if you move up across junk borders, then uh, sometimes it doesn't work, but everywhere. Oh, it like spice can also make it sometimes not work. That is so bizarre. I mean, it's amazing, and it's the coolest thing ever, and it's totally above my head to a certain extent. But yeah, that's, for example, a... how we got uh, over 100,000 diamonds here on the server. Yeah. Also because we did some other projects and, of course, mined a lot of ore, but then we also converted it with the ore RNG here. Yeah. And, yeah, we are probably the Minecraft server, the survival server with the most legit diamonds, uh, yeah. I would say. I mean, I, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised that 100,000 diamonds is, is lots. So basically, as you can see here, um, we are now in the nether side of the server and this is our main station. So from here we have uh, so-called piston bolts going to all directions and to all the farms and places we have on the server. This is probably the bolt that gets used by far the most on the server. Oh, I think really? this bolt yeah. has, yeah. I mean, I think this bolt has probably like five times more uses than all the other bolts oh, from really? combined. So this is our main storage room. Yep. And if, as you can see here, we have all, I think, all stackable items, or at least like most of them, yep. sorted automatically. So you can just input items to the uh, shulker box or the chest at the start of the hall, and they all get automatically sorted into the correct chest. Including we... shulker boxes, or is that done? Uh, no, shulker boxes aren't stackable, right. so we don't sort them. That makes yeah, sense. but we put some uh, in by hand because yeah, we don't have too many of those items, and then we just put them in. Here we have uh, server maps from the main area. For example, uh, you might remember spawn there in the middle, that uh, icy thingy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, but that map was too small, so if you go right through the map, uh, behind here, oh my God. we have a, a big map. map. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, is, this, this is already really, really cool. I've got to make sure that I don't fall off this. This is a beautiful room. I love the floor. The floor is amazing. Oh, this looks so cool. And that is one heck of a map. It's actually zoomed out uh, by a factor of two, so if you wouldn't use normal maps, then it would be <laughs> four times as large. Right, yeah. Um, and it's also only the main area, but you see a lot of uh, rectangles on there. Uh, yep. And those are yeah, a few perimeters we have on the server, but yeah, I think you only see three or four here. But we have like 30 perimeters by now on the server. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was about to ask. I mean, how many perimeters do you have? So 30, that is... That's a, I mean, I mean, what do you reckon the combined blocks mind is throughout all the players? It's Ooh. got to be uses probably around 80 million, but really? uh, but with TNT Total we probably blew removed. up like yeah, half a billion, yeah. Half a billion? Yeah. Half a at least half a billion probably. At least yeah. All right, so yeah, if we need to craft a bunch of pistons, because recently, we, for example, we crafted a million pistons, we used this crafting system here. We can maybe go up the stairs and I show how to fill it up. We prepared something. So we prepared five shulker boxes. Maybe people can already fill it in, five boxes of each, basically for each crafting slot. The shulker boxes are then distributed via hoppers, hopper minecarts into droppers. And by a press of a button or lever, uh, all the items get dispensed with 45 uh, droppers and a flush towards the player. Then we can just pick them up and craft it into pistons. Right. In and this the, case. Is, that, is that this area out the front here? Is this where you do it? Yeah. I yep. see. Here. So now I need. So everything filled up? It should yep. be. Okay, so. Okay. Then now... we can. Press, Press the button, the button. here. I can craft. Then, then flick the lever here, and flick now you get the items. Right. And now take, I can take just a few like, seconds, and then I can go. just start crafting. Yep. 
And I mean, how I, I keep asking for like lengths of time and things like that because this it, it's it's I mean it's just it's crazy how long you guys spend on certain things. How long does it take to make one million pistons? <laughs> A lot of time, actually. This is here is ninety thousand item per hour output for right. blocks. Um, so yeah, around ten hours. <laughs> And you, so, you can't, oh, I'm assuming you can't really AFK at that either. You kind of have to actively do it. Yep. The next thing that they showed me is a really cool potion brewing station that they have sat in their storage room that allows them to brew up a full shulker box of any potion that they want within 45 seconds. I mean, you could do a really complicated recipe and it will do it within 45 seconds and deliver the shulker box to you. And it uses a special trick to do it that I'll be honest, I didn't totally understand. So I'd suggest checking out Il Mango's YouTube channel for that one. Okay, there's one, uh, another cool thing here in the storage and that's actually that room and it's the most underwhelming thing ever <laughs> if you look at it. It's that blue bed in the corner room. Uh, right. But this that blue bed is quite special. Yeah, that bed can do insane stuff um, because if no one's on the server, just one player and he sleeps in that bed, right in the moment he comes out of the bed, a chunk gets loaded a, a bit up, uh, out here from storage. And um, we talked about the RNG stuff earlier. Yep. And uh, that bed also changes the RNG of weather. So we don't have, um, we don't have uh, rain or thunderstorm for 142 minutes. So we can have two hours of peacefulness. <laughs> so, so just by sleeping in this bed right here, yes, it resets the weather and stops and stops rain. Or I mean, that's really once again bizarre. And as far as I can tell, it uses the same sort of mechanics as the RNG system they've got, resetting Minecraft's randomizer using redstone. We have 103,000, we have the or RNG, but still we need, it needs to be come from somewhere. Here's actually one, one of the areas where we got a lot of diamonds from. Right. Uh, if you fly towards the south, about after 500, 600 blocks to the left, we can see a tunnel bore. Yeah. Everyone be careful That's, at the front. <laughs> yeah, that, the, uh, yeah. Don't get blown up, watch out in the front, stay yeah. back. That triggers everything, TNT gets duped, sitting here, and then the last one, before it explodes, we shoot it forward. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so th then usually we would fly the whole distance, search yeah. for diamond ore on the right, and, and pick it out. That's... So we can make, actually maybe fly the whole distance just to show how, how massive this thing is. Like this, this thing is so long. We made a tunnel board to make the tunnel to fit this tunnel board in. <laughs> I like that. That that's that's the way to do it. I mean, this is so you you just you're just going gradually creeping along, exploding out TNT, and then we always thought strip mining across. is a bit cheaty, you know. And then we thought let let's do caving, but make our own cave. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I like that mentality. Yeah, that's very good. <laughs> so yeah, there was a question earlier, where do we get our concrete powder, sand and gravel from? Uh, we use gravity block dupes for that. Right. And that's using the end portal technique. So this is basically you send sand entities through the end portal at the same time it converts into a block again. So we always have gravity blocks staying here in the overworld dimension. And in the end dimension, you get uh, some additional sand or concrete powder entities. Yep. You dupe it. The farm running already? <laughs> ah, no, yep, it yep. started. Oh. Okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not my best choice of standing locations. <laughs> okay, and that is. Yep. That, that is the sand duping or gravity block duping. Okay. Now, now we don't only want the concrete powder, we actually want the concrete as well, right? I mean, you can make a manual machine <laughs> to, to mine it, but why not make it automatic? So this... here we have a concrete factory <laughs> that it's... automatically actually That's makes concrete. So silly! Alright, I've, I've got to get a screenshot of this, because this is the... <laughs> this is the, I mean, it doesn't even... it doesn't even... It's not going to be able to get across how cool this is. Obviously, they'll be able to see it in the video. This is the coolest thing I think I've seen. This is... Uh, this beats the tunnel ball machine. <laughs> 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 uh, this is oh, so crazy to watch. Shot. I want this as my screensaver. I really do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, they just removed it in 114 as well with the sand on the fences. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
So it just kind of scoots along. <laughs> yep. And then, so it's all being pushed in. And then... It, oh. Basically, if you launch a bunch of concrete powder upwards in water, yep. it all stacks up uh, into concrete blocks. And then we just push that out and push that into a TNT blast chamber where we blow it up as it's moving so yeah. we get the 100% drop rate. Yeah, if you look closer, you can see the, the concrete popping up one after the other. Uh, and then Left the force right. gets pushed over. Yep. <laughs> yep. Where I'm jumping below, below me here. <laughs> so cool. What's the max speed of the concrete machine? It's also 108,000 power. So it matches. It matches what one duper. In. Yeah, one duper. Now, one interesting thing about the Sidecraft server is everything seems to be controlled from the center of the server, and then they have instant redstone lines running out to all the redstone contraptions throughout the server, spanning thousands of blocks. So I asked them how they worked, and they showed me something that actually totally blew my mind. I mean, I think this is the coolest thing I've seen in Minecraft in a long time. And so these these little things here, these are the uh, the instant transport. These are the instant redstone lines. Yep. I'm guessing you can yeah. also go down there. There's another cool project we build up quite a while. So we actually have an ice tunnel going there. So if some something happens with those uh, instant wires, since they're not 100 percent reliable, yep. uh, we added an ice ice boat way in order to fix them. So we can just travel there, nice. and we actually managed to automate that. Uh, so we automatically make an ice boat with that machine on the right here. So if you now go to spectator maybe and fly through the machine, it's actually super long and does a lot of things. And the f yeah, and can somebody ride the machine? It. Can somebody uh, can, maybe just ride yeah, the I machine? Yeah. This looks... So this is huge. Yeah, yep. this is enormous. Okay, starting it up now at the front. TNT's tube making a tunnel. <laughs> And these it's armor stands have the, the thrust walker on, and that's... Oh, this <laughs> is so genius. This is so cool. It's about 200 blocks long, I think, this tunnel board. It's a nightmare to build. <laughs> um, I, I guess we should start off with, with the front part. Uh, here we have the tunnel board concept we showed earlier. But this is a double speed one, so it always has two TNT, the basket in the front. And, and, and also the levels out the tunnel in the back too. Oh, rip in multiple. Oh. Wow, this is so this interesting. This machine consists what? out of I think six different parts. So the tunnel bore in the front. Then we spill water to uh, convert lava into obsidian. After that, we remove the water again. Yeah. Then we uh, create the ice tunnel. Oh, the the, the yeah. ice part. Then we actually uh, panic. Then we actually we flatten the, the. What? We flattened the bottom in the beginning. Between. Okay, that could be, yeah. Then we uh, create the ice tunnel, then we slice the ice tunnel, and right in the back, then we also flatten the tunnel. And if you look at the front, how the tunnel looks, and how in the back the tunnel looks, it's insane. <laughs> so it's completely made automatic. The whole uh, rectangular tunnel with ice pass in the middle and everything. This is so cool. Yeah, we actually pull the floor up, like right below, like right behind, between the two ice thingies. We pull the floor up in order to have a level, like at least semi-level. I'm gonna hop out again. <laughs> and I mean, it's a stupid question time. Um, how are you getting the water? Is the water, is is the water being generated because the frost? How's that? How's that happening there? So basically, if you pull a frosted ice block. Yep. And it does not have, um, I think, eight adjacent frosted ice. It will no instantly one. convert into water. It only needs one adjacent ice blocks. So we can basically turn a, turn two water sources into frosted ice, move them a block forward. They instantly melt and create an infinite source again. This is really cool. And it's actually something that I want to use soon because I've had some interesting ideas with it. Anyway, moving on to another farm. Yep. Oh, what on earth is this, guys? <laughs> What on earth are you? Wheat farm. What are you? What are you guys doing? There's no. There, no one needs this much wheat. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, we thought we needed. <laughs> <well. laughs> Make blocks out of it. Yeah, but this is so ridiculous. <laughs> Hay bales have the nice property that they absorb fall damage. I Always understand that. a good block that. to have around. This is... Yeah, and when you put a campfire above it, the smoke goes higher. That's yeah, a nice feature. This is, this is from Y0 to build limit, basically. 
This is nuts. I d honestly, you like I I keep you keep showing me projects that I think are better than the previous one. Like I was blown away by the dupers, but now I'm this is this is even more bonkers. <laughs> right, well I, I'm gonna have to get a screenshot of this too. <laughs> <laughs> You should fly up and then uh, around the pillars downwards. It's so cool. <laughs> Man, I I don't even know what to say about this. I, I turn it on. Okay. And um, it's I mean, what, what sort wheat? of rates are we talking here then? In terms of, in terms of, hundred forty thousand uh, wheat power. It's actually like quite slow in terms of farms, but it's really fast for a wheat farm. Yeah, I mean, you slow 140,000 per hour. Those two words don't normally go next to one another, but I'll accept it as we are on the Cycraft server. So that <laughs> that is that's nuts. Then not onto the pumpkin, potato, and carrot farm. This is enormous. Yep. So, I mean, I'm guessing this is all for villager trading. I assume. I suppose the wheat could also be used. That's for villager correct. Trading. Yep. So the pumpkin farm is broken now. Uh, it's just also one of those many changes. Every version broke now yep. actually the potato and carrot farm is also broke now but i just wanted to show you <laughs> put a lot of effort into a trading hall uh the reason was actually we, we traded for redstone in 1.8 right uh, so we always had the issue not, not enough redstone yeah and then i came up hey why wouldn't we trade for that and using a script i was actually able to trade like seven times faster than the quad which that farm was oh, and wow. that's why we made this area here and now onto one of the coolest things that I've seen on the server so far. I know I've said that a number of times, but I can promise you, this is just craziness. All right, do you reckon yeah, I should please. go into spectator mode? Yep, what? spectator mode. It's probably best. This is a really pretty rim. Oh my word. This is beautiful. That's actually where we did our first automatically random floor. Yep. This was also done by a machine, the floor. So this doesn't have the gradient. It's just the same color scheme all over, but it also thinks it looks really good. Yeah, yeah, somebody in the nether too. Okay, mob should, it's mob switch should be off. Okay, is somebody okay. in the nether? Not. Yep. Somebody should go there because I'm gonna turn the farm on. I'm in the nether. Okay, okay. can awesome. you turn on the collection? I'm gonna turn the farm on then. Turn on the collection. Yeah, uh, sky uh, the collection on. I guess flick the lever. Yep. At the bottom, yeah. And so, how many how many modules, how many farms is this? 24 slime farms, I think. This is yep. uh, 24 this chunks. location specifically chosen uh, for the amount of slime chunks it has. Yeah. It has, I think, 33 slime chunks in here. Those farms are not quite like the standard design of slime farm you normally build. Yep. Uh, we there some bedrock broken to, to make them lower, so we can fit in uh, four layers within the first sub chunk. Yeah, because uh, in the first sub chunk the spawning is condensed and so on. Then uh, we lure the uh, slimes with iron columns. By now this is quite standard thing, but uh, at the time this was uh, well not revolutionary but new, I guess. Yeah, yeah, it was a new, new kind of new kind uh, of breaking thing. Then instead of like lava blades or cactuses, we just send them through a portal. The portal itself is also a little bit special, because if you look at the portal, there's a dragon egg in one of the corners of the portal always. Oh, yeah, how... how... Uh, why, why... so, okay, so why the dragon egg? There, I've got to ask, how come? The dragon uh, egg basically means that if you break, like, if you break one of the obsidian blocks, uh, it means that the slimes on the other side when they go through the portal, they actually spawn below the portal, not inside the portal, which is right. really useful. That makes sense. I mean, it doesn't make sense, but it, <laughs> it does. It makes sense as to What's why that to would say? be useful. <laughs> Once you see them all in one place, that's when you really get an impression as to how many slimes are being generated by this thing. Just yeah. jumped on. I mean, that is so... Jumped out. Is it at half speed at the moment? Yes. That's at why half speed. Have... Why is yes. it at half speed? No, I, I, I fully. no, it's 140 more. Okay. Okay. Okay, good. That is. This is this once again. This could be my screensaver. I I definitely want this as my screensaver. This is a <laughs> okay, nice. uh, another portal we're falling out of, by the way. Yeah. So yeah, just 
with the nether with the with the nether portal, I can't help but notice that yeah, there's no blocks on the bottom. So is that the same situation? This is actually a little bit different than Dragonic, because the Dragonic has to fall down, right? So right. here you cannot just like let a Dragonic fall on. Right. But these uh, two obsidian were broken with update suppression, which is basically you cause uh, so many block updates that the one for breaking the block kind of get lost. It gets more slips or less. through, yeah. Slips through. And it actually took around five hours just to take those two blocks uh, to break those. Wow. So, so you kind of had to just constantly cause just huge amounts of block updates or updates in the in the world and basically he had placed two and a half thousand banners in a row yeah <laughs> attached to that uh um obsidian block then we broke the obsidian block and uh, because of the update order first all of those banners broke in a row until we hit about two and a half thousand or a bit, a bit less and then it just stopped it couldn't process anymore right. then it didn't update the the portal block that, that's the trick that's that's really cool I mean, that's basically a... just a two and a half thousand block long banner line towards the negative X direction. Mm. <laughs> Still works too. One thing I can recommend is going in spectator and just standing in the middle of the the magma pad and listening to the sound. The sound of death that's is That's a handsome. good sound. This is a good sound. Man, looking straight up as well and just seeing all of these just shooting out all over the place is also quite cool. There's yeah, so screen server. So, I don't know if I've asked, what are the rates of this thing? I have to ask. About 330 period. Oh. And where do all those items go? Do they all go in through That's the nether? That's actually an interesting Below, point. below. Can... Uh, basically, we have an item collection system here that packs, uh, basically just first gets all the items yep. in minecarts and then unloads them into shulker box loaders. Yep. Those shulker box loaders then uh, pack them into shulker boxes and then they go through another quality control system like we like the one we saw on the witch huts so basically we just detect if the signal strength is 15 and then if it's not 15 they get broken because sometimes we get feathers or chicken yeah. uh, or gold nuggets from zombie pigment that spawn in the portals yeah and that uh, that would mess up the crafting system because the rest of the uh, slime uh, blocks uh, slime balls get sent to the crafting system, to the little hut you see that enemy is standing on. Yeah. Uh, and they get placed as uh, shulker boxes there, then you take them out, craft them into slime blocks and put them into this shulker box. And from there, uh, they actually get taken to the top to uh, with an item elevator to uh, double chest here, and I think somebody who designed the computer should then explain to her. So, don't need it anymore. What are the 16.25% uh, and 0.97m? Uh, is that the storage? So, you're yeah, asking that's... the right questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. So, we have at the moment 970,000 slime blocks stored, and yep. that means 16.25% of the storage's capacity is filled up. Wow. But so yeah, really how, how do we know this <laughs> automatically? Uh, it's the system here next to the rival hall of the piston bolt. Yeah. Uh, we store the shulker boxes manually in, in those double chests here. And then, yeah, we have to go around and check out the computer in the back. This is... <laughs> this is so <quite> crazy. <laughs> okay, so this is, this is a fun one. Um, Basically, this whole first bike part until like somewhere over here uh, is just counting all the signal strength together, right? Right. So all so-called pull adders. Um, then basically all that does the U-turn is conversion uh, from hex to decimal. Right. Until yeah, somewhere over here in the front, and from here on. Till the display is multiplying by a fixed number, which is the amount of uh, slime blocks per strength. Right. And then in the back uh, of that, we see behind those lines here, that's the conversion to a percent as well. Yeah. Easy. I mean, <laughs> words there that I, I, you know, I'm not going to pretend that I fully, I'm, I'm fully with you, and I would never be able to build it. I do understand what it does. 
but the way that you've done it is yeah this is mind blowing this truly is mind blowing I don't even know what to say about this because I mean yeah I guess I hadn't even thought how difficult it would be to calculate a percentage of of your story how, how filled your storage is but oh, it's just so cool to look at and it's so amazing that you guys built this in survival mode and that to me seems like a good place to end for today's video now as I say that was a very small just a tiny little chunk of what is going on on the Sidecraft server uh, but I just want to say a massive thank you once again to them for having me on the server and having me look around it's so interesting and I'm just yeah it's so cool to see these sorts of projects still being worked on in Minecraft even after 10 years of it being released as a game I just I absolutely love it these people I'm so glad that they exist so show them your support links to all of their YouTube channels can be found down in the description and to let them know that what they're doing is fantastic but anyway I hope that you enjoyed this little video if you did please hit that like button and if you really loved it then make sure to subscribe but thanks for watching guys this has been Mumbo and I'm out I'll see you later ooh, 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 ooh.